Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Your teaching has revolutionized my life. It set me on course for, for where I'm going for the rest of my life. So thank you, Andrew, for all you've done for me. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series that I started last week teaching on the faith of God. This is a little booklet that I wrote that is just a summary, a brief summary of this teaching, and uh, we're offering this to you as a free gift. And then we also have DVDs and CDs that were taken from my television program that cover this subject. And then we're offering some additional product, and this one's entitled, You've Already Got It. And it's the same teaching about uh, the faith of God, but it's just on a broader application. It applies to every single thing, but it's the same principle. And uh, we'll make all of those offers at the end of our program today. I've already covered a lot of material, and I would really encourage you to go to our website, awmi.net, and you can watch all of our past broadcasts. You can watch all of this week's broadcast at one time, and it would really help you to get all of this in its context. But I was talking last Friday from Mark chapter 5 about the woman who had the issue of the blood, and she came behind and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and she said, If I can touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And instantly she was healed. And one of the points that I was making was that Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? Most people believe, of course, he knew who touched him because he was God. But no, he was God in his spirit, but his physical body did not know everything. He had to be educated and teach himself how to function. And in the natural, he did not know who touched him. And that's really significant because most people kind of have this concept that God is like sitting at a desk in heaven and he's got millions of prayer requests and he's going through them and he has to evaluate whether this person is holy enough, whether this person is fasted enough, whether they've paid their tithes and he's evaluating and making his decision on whether he will grant their request based on their performance. Now, you probably haven't you know, imagined it exactly the way I described it, but that's the principle. Most people believe that God evaluates every person who needs something on a person-by-person basis and grants your answer or denies you based on how He feels about you. But what I'm trying to establish is there are laws that govern how God's power flows. And it's illustrated here because Jesus didn't know who touched Him. He didn't size this woman up. He didn't approve or disapprove her. It's just His power was there. And when a person contacted Him in faith, and when they were grounded in faith, that power flowed just as surely as electricity flows through copper. It's just laws that govern it. If a person grabs a live wire, and if it's not insulated, and if they're grounded, that power is going to flow through them and either electrocute them, kill them, or it burn them, hurt them some way or another. And it's not the electric company who it was personal with them, and they decided, I'm going to teach them a lesson. No, it's just laws that govern it, how it works. And if you are ignorant of those laws, those laws can kill you, or it can keep you from using and benefiting from electricity if you don't know. You know, you might sit there and decide that uh, copper is really expensive, and so rather than wire your house with copper, maybe it'd be cheaper to just use string or something like that. And so you just put string up and hook it up to all of your light switches. Well, it is easier. It's more flexible. It's cheaper. It's a lot easier to use. But you know, there are laws that govern electricity, and it won't flow through string the same way it flows through copper. So it doesn't matter what you think is the best. You've got to discover what those laws are and how electricity flows, and you've got to learn to cooperate with them. The laws aren't going to change for you. You have to change to match up with those laws. Well, see, we understand that in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm, people just think, well, you know, uh, it's too much effort for me. I've got a job. I've got a family. I've got other things. I can't spend time in the Word of God, getting my mind renewed and learning the things of God. One of the scriptures I used last week, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, All things that pertain unto life and godliness come through the knowledge of Him. And you think, well, I just had not got time to do all this. This is what I pay you preachers for. 
I'm just going to give to you and you go do it for me. I'll come and you pray for me and stuff. You may, that may be what you want to do, but I guarantee you the power of God's not going to flow with that kind of attitude. You've got to discover how God ordained faith to work and you've got to renew your mind to it. And if you don't, it won't flow. This woman put those laws into effect and boom, the power of God just flowed because there are laws. When the conditions are met, the power of God flows effortlessly. And the Lord told her it was her faith that made her whole. It wasn't his faith. He didn't turn around and override her unbelief and all of these things and just somehow or another give this to her. No, she understood and reached out and received. Man, this is powerful. This has changed my life. You know, when I first got really turned on to the Lord, I believed for people to be healed. I was even in unofficially engaged to this girl when I was in Vietnam. And when I came back, we were planning on getting married and I prayed for her to be healed. I was actually got an emergency leave and I came home from Vietnam and I was with her when she hemorrhaged and choked and strangled on her own blood and she died. And we prayed for her to be healed. We even prayed after she died. We stayed in the room for an hour or two praying over her, believing for her to come back to life and the hospital people finally had to throw us out. And I guarantee you, I did not understand that's before I understood these things that I'm telling you. And all of the people around me, her family and so many people said, well, God doesn't heal every time. And I'd, I'd take a scripture that says, no, that by his stripes we were healed. It's already done. It's not a matter of will he heal us. It's already done. Well, then they say, so what are you saying? And they just immediately, because they didn't see the results that they wanted, they immediately thought that it's God. He just chose not to heal that girl. By the grace of God, I said, no, I don't believe that God failed in His promise. I said, whatever the problem is, it's not God. It was on my part. And it was years later that I began to get this understanding that there are laws that govern things. And we, we violated a bunch of laws. I'm not going to go into depth and teach about all of that, but there were reasons for it. There was reasons why that happened. And whether you know it or not, there's reasons why you aren't seeing the power of God flow in your life. And none of them have to do with God's lack of love for you or His lack of desire for you to be healed. He's already healed you. He's already prospered you. He's already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God is not the one who's holding out on you. The problem is we don't know how to use the faith that's been given to us. It operates by laws. What are some of those laws? Look right here in this example about this woman. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25, it says, A certain woman which had uh, an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. In verse 27, when she had heard of Jesus, that's one of the laws of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. You can't believe for something that you don't even know that it's God's will for you to have. Did you know I was raised in a Baptist church and the Baptist church chose to believe that miracles of healing and things like that ENDED WITH THE APOSTLES. THEY CHOSE TO BELIEVE THAT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND THIS GIFT OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES WASN'T FOR US TODAY. AND SO THEY DIDN'T TEACH ON IT. THEY ACTUALLY TAUGHT AGAINST IT. AND DID YOU KNOW, BECAUSE I DIDN'T HAVE ANY KNOWLEDGE ABOUT IT, I GUARANTEE YOU, I DIDN'T EXPERIENCE THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. FAITH COMES BY HEARING AND HEARING BY THE WORD OF GOD. IF YOU DON'T KNOW THAT THIS IS SOMETHING THAT GOD WANTS YOU TO HAVE, IT'S NOT GOING TO COME ON YOU ACCIDENTALLY. YOU DON'T CATCH IT LIKE A DISEASE OR A SICKNESS. YOU HAVE TO PURSUE THE THINGS OF GOD OR YOU WON'T GET THEM. SO UNTIL I HEARD THE TRUTH ABOUT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND WHEN I GOT KNOWLEDGE OF THAT IS WHEN MY FAITH BEGAN TO START REACHING OUT AND APPROPRIATING THIS. YOU DON'T HAVE THE THINGS OF GOD HAPPEN UNTIL YOU GET KNOWLEDGE ABOUT IT. SO THIS WOMAN, FIRST OF ALL, HAD TO HEAR ABOUT JESUS. IF SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER SHE HAD BEEN RAISED IN A VACUUM AND IF SHE NEVER HEARD ANYBODY ELSE TALK ABOUT JESUS, I GUARANTEE YOU THERE WAS NOBODY ELSE IN THOSE DAYS THAT WAS HEALING PEOPLE WITH AN ISSUE OF BLOOD. 
AND SHE HAD ALREADY BEEN TO THE PHYSICIANS AND THE PHYSICIANS COULDN'T HEAL HER. AND IF SHE HADN'T HAVE HEARD ABOUT JESUS, SHE WOULD HAVE SPENT HER ENTIRE LIFE WITH THIS ISSUE OF BLOOD. IT PROBABLY WOULD HAVE ENDED HER LIFE PREMATURELY. SHE WOULD NOT HAVE EXPERIENCED THIS HEALING. ONE OF THE THINGS THAT HAS TO HAPPEN FOR YOU TO START SEEING FAITH BEGIN TO WORK AND PRODUCE THE POSITIVE EFFECT THAT GOD WANTS IN YOUR LIFE, YOU'VE GOT TO HEAR THE TRUTH. YOU SHALL KNOW THE TRUTH, AND THE TRUTH SHALL MAKE YOU FREE. JOHN CHAPTER 8, VERSE 32. AND IT'S ONLY THE TRUTH YOU KNOW THAT MAKES YOU FREE. WHAT YOU DON'T KNOW IS ABSOLUTELY KILLING YOU. AND YOU KNOW WHAT I'M DOING? I'M SPEAKING TRUTH FROM GOD'S WORD. I'M SAYING THINGS THAT I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, MANY OF YOU, DO YOU JUST LOOK AROUND AT YOUR FAMILY, MAYBE YOUR FRIENDS, MAYBE EVEN YOUR CHURCH, AND YOU THINK, WELL, NOBODY BELIEVES THIS WAY. AND SO YOU HAVE A TENDENCY TO SIT THERE AND JUST GO BY WHAT EVERYBODY ELSE IS SAYING AND WHAT YOU SEE, OR ARE YOU GOING TO GO BY WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS? I'M GIVING YOU AN OPTION. I'M TELLING YOU THAT THE WORD OF GOD HAS RELEASED THESE THINGS, AND GOD WANTS YOU TO WALK IN POWER AND IN VICTORY. YOU'VE GOT A CHOICE. NOW, ARE YOU GOING TO BELIEVE THE TRUTH THAT I'M SAYING FROM THE WORD OF GOD, OR ARE YOU GOING TO LET YOUR TRADITIONS AND DOCTRINES OF MAN MAKE THE WORD OF GOD OF NONE EFFECT IN YOUR LIFE? BUT THE FIRST STEP IS YOU GOT TO HEAR SOMEBODY SPEAK THE TRUTH. SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, TRUTH HAS TO COME TO YOU. IF YOU'RE INTERCEDING FOR ANOTHER PERSON TO BE SAVED, DID YOU KNOW THEY AREN'T GOING TO BE SAVED IN A VACUUM? I'VE ALREADY USED THIS VERSE OUT OF PETER WHERE IT SAYS, BEING BORN AGAIN, NOT OF CORRUPTIBLE SEED, BUT OF INCORRUPTIBLE SEED BY THE WORD OF GOD. JUST AS SURELY AS BABIES DON'T COME BY THE STORK, YOU GOT TO CONCEIVE THEM. A SEED HAS TO BE SOWN IN THE SAME WAY THE SEED OF GOD'S WORD HAS TO COME INTO A PERSON. SO IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW MUCH YOU PRAY FOR THIS PERSON. IT DOESN'T MATTER IF YOU FAST ON THEIR BEHALF. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT HAPPENS. IF THE TRUTH DOESN'T COME TO THIS PERSON, THEY ARE NOT GOING TO GET SET FREE. SO ONE OF THE LAWS THAT GOVERNS FAITH AND HOW IT FUNCTIONS IS FAITH IS DEPENDENT UPON KNOWING THE TRUTH. YOU GOT TO HEAR THE TRUTH. YOU'VE GOT TO UNDERSTAND WHAT GOD'S WILL FOR YOU IS. THAT'S THE REASON I'M ON TELEVISION SHARING THESE TRUTHS THAT HAVE SET ME FREE. AND IF YOU'LL RECEIVE IT, IT WILL SET YOU FREE. SO IN VERSE 27, IT SAYS, WHEN SHE HAD HEARD OF HIM, THAT'S ONE OF THE LAWS THAT GOVERNS HOW FAITH WORKS, THEN SHE CAME IN THE PRESS BEHIND AND TOUCHED HIS GARMENT. HERE'S ANOTHER LAW, AND THAT'S OUT OF JAMES CHAPTER 2, VERSE 20. IT SAYS, FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. IF YOU HEAR SOMEBODY SAY THAT IT'S GOD'S WILL FOR YOU TO BE WELL, IT'S GOD'S WILL FOR YOU TO PROSPER, IT'S GOD'S WILL FOR YOU TO BE BLESSED, IT'S GOD'S WILL FOR YOUR MARRIAGE TO BE HEALED OR WHATEVER, IF YOU HEAR THOSE THINGS, AND EVEN IF YOU HEAR THE TRUTH, IF YOU DON'T ACT ON IT, THEN FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. SO HERE'S ANOTHER LAW OF GOD. YOU'VE GOT TO ACT ON YOUR FAITH. I COULD EVEN EXPAND ON THAT BY SAYING YOU'VE GOT TO ACT CONSISTENT WITH WHAT YOU SAY YOU ARE BELIEVING FOR. LIKE IF YOU'RE PRAYING FOR HEALING, BUT THEN EVERYTHING YOU SAY AND DO IS SICK, WELL, THEN YOU'RE VOIDING YOUR FAITH. FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. THAT FAITH IS NOT GOING TO RELEASE ANY POWER UNLESS YOUR ACTIONS ARE CONSISTENT WITH WHAT YOU BELIEVE. SO THIS WOMAN HEARD ABOUT JESUS, AND THEN SHE CAME. WHAT IF SHE HAD BEEN IN HER HOUSE, SUFFERING WITH THIS ISSUE OF BLOOD FOR 12 YEARS, PROBABLY WEAK, DIDN'T FEEL LIKE GETTING OUT, DIDN'T FEEL LIKE DOING THOSE KIND OF THINGS, AND YET IF SHE'D HAVE JUST STAYED IN HER HOUSE AND SAID, MAN, I BELIEVE JESUS COULD HEAL ME, BUT SHE NEVER ACTED ON IT, SHE COULD HAVE DIED IN THAT SITUATION. SHE HAD TO GET UP AND GO DO SOMETHING. FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. IF YOU SAY YOU BELIEVE GOD, YOU'RE GOING TO HAVE TO ACT LIKE YOU BELIEVE GOD. BOY, THAT IS SO IMPORTANT. I COULD SPEND A LOT OF TIME ON THAT. Uh, I DO WANT TO BALANCE THIS BY SAYING THAT THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT HEAR THINGS LIKE WHAT I JUST SAID, FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. AND SO THEY THINK, ALL RIGHT, WHAT I'M GOING TO DO, I'M GOING TO ACT LIKE I'M HEALED, AND THEY THINK THAT THEIR ACTIONS WILL MAKE FAITH COME. THAT IS NOT WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. FAITH COMES BY HEARING AND HEARING BY THE WORD OF GOD. BUT ONCE FAITH COMES, FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. FAITH WILL PRODUCE ACTIONS, BUT ACTIONS DON'T PRODUCE FAITH. IF SOMEBODY IS, SAY, FOR INSTANCE, STRUGGLING WITH A SICKNESS, AND YOU'RE HEARING ME SAY THESE THINGS, AND you, YOU'RE, SAY, ON INSULIN, AND YOU SAY, WELL, I'M GOING TO JUST QUIT MY INSULIN, 
BECAUSE I, FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD, SO I'M GOING TO ACT AND THAT'S GOING TO MAKE MY FAITH COMPLETE. IF YOU DON'T ALREADY HAVE FAITH, WELL, THEN IT'S POSSIBLE THAT YOU'RE GOING TO DIE. IT DID NOT SAY THAT JUST ACTING LIKE YOU'RE HEALED PRODUCES HEALING. BUT IF YOU TRULY BELIEVE GOD, YOU AREN'T GOING TO SEE THE FULL MANIFESTATION OF THAT FAITH. YOU AREN'T GOING TO SEE THE END RESULTS OF THAT FAITH UNTIL YOU ACT IN AGREEMENT. SO I AM 100% IN AGREEMENT WITH ACTING IN FAITH, BUT YOU HAVE TO FIRST OF ALL HAVE FAITH AND THEN ACTIONS. IT'S NOT ACTIONS PRODUCE FAITH. FAITH PRODUCE ACTIONS. SO IF A PERSON QUITS THEIR MEDICATION OR SOMETHING AND THEN THEY DIE, IT'S BECAUSE THEY THOUGHT THAT BY ACTING A CERTAIN WAY, THAT WOULD MAKE THAT FAITH WORK. NO, FAITH HAS TO ALREADY BE WORKING, AND THEN ACTIONS COME. ANY PERSON WHO WOULD SIT THERE AND COME TO ME AND SAY, SHOULD I QUIT MY MEDICATION? IF YOU'RE HAVING TO ASK ME, THEN I'D SAY NO, BECAUSE, SEE, YOU, you AREN'T BELIEVING IT. YOU DON'T ALREADY HAVE IT IN YOUR HEART. YOU KNOW, WE JUST GOT THROUGH WITH A HEALING IS HERE CONFERENCE, AND WE HAD A NUMBER OF PEOPLE GIVE TESTIMONIES ABOUT HOW THEY'D BEEN HEALED. AND THERE WAS THIS ONE MAN, MIKE HESH, WHO HAD A CANCER ON HIS CHEST. AND I MEAN, IT WAS AS BIG AS BOTH OF MY FISTS WADDED UP RIGHT HERE, and, AND HE HAD PICTURES OF IT IN HIS VIDEO. YOU CAN GO TO OUR WEBSITE, AND YOU CAN SEE HIS ENTIRE HEALING TESTIMONY. AND ANYWAY, HE STRUGGLED FOR EIGHT YEARS WITH THIS THING, BUT FINALLY, HE GOT HOLD OF THIS TRUTH THAT HE ALREADY WAS HEALED. AND HE SAID HE KNEW IT. HE KNEW HE WAS HEALED. HE WASN'T ANY LONGER TRYING TO GET HEALED. HE KNEW HE WAS HEALED. AND HE WAS SO CONVINCED OF IT THAT HE ACTUALLY FORGOT THIS THING. NOW, IT WAS SAPPING THE LIFE OUT OF HIM, AND HE COULD HARDLY GET UP AND DO ANYTHING. HE HAD TO QUIT WORK. HIS WIFE HAD TO DRESS IT AND PUT THESE THINGS ON IT AND PUT PLASTIC AROUND IT BECAUSE IT WOULD OOZE BLOOD AND THINGS. BUT HE JUST LITERALLY FORGOT ABOUT IT. HE WAS ALREADY HEALED, AND AS SOON AS HE KNEW HE WAS HEALED, WELL, THEN THAT THING BEGAN TO SHRINK. BUT SEE, IT WASN'T HIS ACTIONS THAT MADE THE FAITH COME. IT WAS WHEN FAITH CAME THAT HIS ACTIONS OF ACTING LIKE HE WAS ALREADY HEALED CAME AS THE BYPRODUCT. WORKS ARE THE BYPRODUCT OF FAITH. WORKS DON'T PRODUCE FAITH. SO THE REASON I BRING ALL THAT UP IS TO SAY THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE HEARING ME SAY THAT FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD, AND SO YOU'RE GOING TO THINK, WELL, ALL I'VE GOT TO DO THEN IS JUST ACT LIKE I'M ALREADY HEALED. WELL, IF YOU ALREADY BELIEVE, WELL, THEN YES, YOU GOT TO ACT LIKE YOU'RE HEALED. BUT IF YOU DON'T TRULY BELIEVE, IF THERE'S DOUBT IN YOUR HEART, YOU NEED TO GET THAT FAITH ISSUE SOLVED FIRST. YOU NEED TO GET RID OF THAT UNBELIEF, AND THEN ONCE YOU GET TO WHERE YOU'RE IN FAITH, WELL, THEN YES, ACT. HEAL, BUT ACTING HEALED DOESN'T PRODUCE HEALING. FAITH IS WHAT PRODUCES HEALING, AND FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. ANYWAY, THAT PROBABLY NEEDS MORE EXPLANATION THAN WHAT I'VE GIVEN IT, BUT THIS IS ONE OF THE LAWS OF GOD THAT FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. SO SHE HEARD OF JESUS, AND THEN SHE CAME IN THE PRESS BEHIND AND TOUCHED HIS GARMENT. AND HERE'S ANOTHER THING THAT I BELIEVE IS REALLY ESSENTIAL ABOUT FAITH, WHEN YOU UNDERSTAND THAT THIS WOMAN HAD AN ISSUE OF BLOOD, AND ACCORDING TO THE LEVITICAL LAW, ANYBODY WHO HAD AN ISSUE OF BLOOD, uh, THEY WERE UNCLEAN, AND ANY PERSON OR ANYTHING THAT THEY TOUCHED WAS UNCLEAN. IF A PERSON WITH AN ISSUE OF BLOOD SAT IN A CHAIR, THAT CHAIR WAS UNCLEAN, AND IT HAD TO GO THROUGH A CLEANSING. IF THEY TOUCHED A PERSON, THE PERSON BECAME UNCLEAN. AND BECAUSE OF THIS, THE JEWS ACTUALLY SEPARATED PEOPLE LIKE THIS. ONE OF THE CLASSIC EXAMPLES THAT MOST PEOPLE ARE AWARE OF IS, um, uh, LEPROSY. AND IF YOU HAD LEPROSY, YOU HAD TO BE TOTALLY SHUNNED FROM SOCIETY AND DWELL IN A LEPER COLONY, AND YOU COULDN'T TOUCH ANY PERSON, AND ANYTHING THAT YOU TOUCHED, CLOTHES, uh, FOOD, um, BOWLS THAT YOU TOUCHED, CHAIRS THAT YOU SAT ON, A SADDLE THAT YOU rode IN, ANY OF THOSE THINGS WERE ALL UNCLEAN. BUT THE SAME THING WAS TRUE OF AN ISSUE OF BLOOD. SO THIS WOMAN WAS UNCLEAN, AND FOR HER TO COME IN THE PRESS BEHIND AND TOUCH THE HEM OF HIS GARMENT... NOW THINK ABOUT THIS. HE WORE A ROBE THAT WAS DOWN TO THE GROUND. FOR HER TO TOUCH THE HEM OF HIS GARMENT, THAT WAS NEARLY DOWN TO THE GROUND. THERE'S NO WAY FOR HER TO PULL THROUGH ALL OF THESE PEOPLE AND JUST LADY-LIKE KNEEL OVER AND TOUCH THE HEM OF HIS GARMENT. TO ME, THIS IMPLIES THAT THIS WOMAN WAS PROBABLY ON HER HANDS AND KNEES CRAWLING THROUGH THIS CROWD. AND IN THE PROCESS OF TRYING TO GET TO JESUS, SHE TOUCHED HUNDREDS OF PEOPLE, LOTS OF PEOPLE. 
AND IF THEY HAD KNOWN THAT SHE HAD AN ISSUE OF BLOOD, THEY COULD HAVE STONED HER TO DEATH. SO ALL OF THESE THINGS SAID, HERE'S ANOTHER LAW OF GOD, IS THAT YOU CAN'T LET PEOPLE STOP YOU. YOU CAN'T LET PUBLIC OPINION STOP YOU. YOU'VE GOT TO GET SO COMMITTED THAT YOU ARE NOT GOING TO BE SWAYED BY OTHER THINGS. JESUS SAID THIS IN JOHN CHAPTER 5, VERSE 44. HE SAYS, HOW CAN YOU BELIEVE WHICH RECEIVE HONOR ONE OF ANOTHER AND SEEK NOT THE HONOR THAT COMES FROM GOD ALONE? ANOTHER WAY OF SAYING THAT IS, YOU CAN'T BELIEVE IF YOU ARE SEEKING THE HONOR THAT COMES FROM PEOPLE. IF YOU HAVE TO HAVE PEOPLE'S APPROVAL, IF YOU AREN'T GOING TO DO ANYTHING THAT IS GOING TO COST YOU THE APPROVAL OF MAYBE A SPOUSE OR A PARENT OR A CHILD OR A WORKPLACE OR SOMETHING, AND IF, you, if YOU'RE WORRIED ABOUT WHAT EVERYBODY ELSE THINKS, DID YOU KNOW THAT THAT STOPS THE FLOW OF GOD'S POWER THE SAME WAY THAT RUBBER INSULATES THE FLOW OF ELECTRICITY? YOU CAN'T BE A PEOPLE PLEASER. IT SAYS IN PROVERBS CHAPTER 29 THAT THE FEAR OF MAN BRINGS A SNARE. THAT WORD SNARE THERE IS TALKING ABOUT A TRAP. IT'S A TRAP OF THE DEVIL. IF YOU ARE WORRIED ABOUT PEOPLE AND YOU HAVE TO HAVE PEOPLE'S APPROVAL, THAT'S GOING TO HINDER YOU. THIS WOMAN WAS TO A PLACE THAT SHE WAS WILLING TO PUT HER LIFE ON THE LINE. SHE COULD HAVE BEEN STONED TO DEATH FOR BEING OUT IN PUBLIC AND TOUCHING PEOPLE. AND SHE WAS SO DESPERATE, SO COMMITTED THAT SHE WAS ON HER HANDS AND KNEES CRAWLING TO JESUS. THAT IS ONE OF THE THINGS THAT RELEASES THE POWER OF GOD. WHEN YOU REACH A PLACE TO WHERE YOU JUST HAVE REACHED THE END OF YOUR ROPE, YOU ARE SICK AND TIRED OF BEING SICK AND TIRED, AND YOU'RE GOING TO DO WHATEVER IT TAKES TO GET OVER IT. THAT IS ONE OF THE THINGS THAT ALLOWS THE POWER OF GOD TO FLOW. I COULD GIVE YOU PERSONAL TESTIMONIES IN MY LIFE WHERE I WAS STANDING AND BELIEVING FOR SOMETHING AND I PUT UP WITH THINGS FOR A PERIOD OF TIME UNTIL IT JUST BECOMES UNBEARABLE AND I FINALLY JUST KNOW IN THE NAME OF JESUS. AND I MEAN, I GET DOGMATIC, um, VIOLENT. YOU KNOW, IT SAYS IN MATTHEW CHAPTER 11, I BELIEVE IT'S VERSE 12, JESUS SAID THAT SINCE THE DAYS OF JOHN THE BAPTIST, THE KINGDOM OF HEAVEN SUFFERETH VIOLENCE AND THE VIOLENT TAKE IT BY FORCE. YOU GOT TO GET VIOLENT. YOU GOT TO GET TO WHERE I REFUSE TO LIVE LESS THAN WHAT JESUS PURCHASED FOR ME. AND WHEN YOU GET THAT ATTITUDE AND PUT YOUR FOOT DOWN AND SAID, I'VE GONE AS FAR AS I'M GOING. SATAN, I'M NOT GOING ANY FURTHER. MAN, THAT RELEASES THIS SUPERNATURAL POWER OF GOD. BUT AS LONG AS YOU CAN TOLERATE LIVING LESS THAN GOD'S BEST, YOU WILL. YOU NEED TO GET TO THIS PLACE TO WHERE I'VE HAD IT. I'M NOT GOING ANY FURTHER. THIS IS MINE. NOT ANGRY AT GOD, BUT ANGRY AT THE DEVIL. ANGRY AT THESE THINGS THAT SATAN IS USING TO SAP THE LIFE OUT OF YOU. AS LONG AS YOU ARE PASSIVE, THAT IS AN INSULATOR TO THE POWER OF GOD. YOU GOT TO GET VIOLENTLY RESOLVED AND SAY, THIS IS MINE. I RECEIVE IT IN THE NAME OF THE LORD. YOU SAY, IN THE NAME OF JESUS, I'M NOT GOING BY WHAT I SEE. I GO BY WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THERE'S MORE THAN JUST THIS PHYSICAL REALM. THERE'S ALSO A SPIRITUAL REALM. I DON'T CARE WHAT THIS LOOKS LIKE. I KNOW WHAT GOD'S WORD SAYS. THE DOCTORS TOLD ME IT WOULD BE A YEAR BEFORE I WOULD WALK NORMAL. I WAS BEING KILLED BY A CANCEROUS TUMOR. I WAS TOLD MY WIFE WOULD NOT LEAVE THE HOSPITAL ALIVE. MY NAME IS TERESA HOTELLING AND I'M FROM WOODLAND PARK, COLORADO. I WAS TOLD THAT I WOULD NEVER RECOVER FROM SJOGREN SYNDROME, LUPUS, OR THYROID DISEASE. FOR YEARS, I HAD TRIED EVERYTHING, MEDICAL TREATMENTS, HOLISTIC TREATMENTS, EVEN LOTS OF PRAYER, SPEAKING AND COMMANDING, BUT NOTHING SEEMED TO WORK. THAT'S WHEN I ENROLLED INTO KARIS BIBLE COLLEGE AND MY FOCUS SHIFTED OFF OF MY SYMPTOMS AND ONTO THE FINISHED WORK OF JESUS. IN JUST A MATTER OF MONTHS, I RECEIVED MY COMPLETE HEALING AFTER SITTING UNDER THE WORD AT KARIS BIBLE COLLEGE. AND TODAY, SEVERAL YEARS LATER, I AM STILL WALKING IN THAT COMPLETE HEALING AND I AM NOT ALONE. I WAS WALKING NORMAL WITHIN A MATTER OF WEEKS AND TODAY I AM IN FULL-TIME MINISTRY. TODAY I AM CANCER FREE AND I'M LIVING LIFE TO THE FULLEST. MY WIFE'S MIRACULOUS RECOVERY SHOCKED ALL THE DOCTORS. BECAUSE PEOPLE LIKE YOU PARTNERED WITH ANDREW WOMACK MINISTRIES, WE HAVE ALL BEEN GIVEN OUR LIVES BACK. WE CANNOT THANK YOU ENOUGH FOR YOUR GENEROSITY, BUT THERE ARE STILL MILLIONS OF PEOPLE OUT THERE WHO NEED THE SAME TRUTH THAT SET US FREE. WON'T YOU PLEASE HELP US GET THAT MESSAGE TO THEM? PLEASE BE A PARTNER WITH THIS MINISTRY TODAY. BECOME A PARTNER TODAY. <laughs>
You know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today. You know, on today's program, I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And if you haven't received either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would like to encourage you to please call our helpline. We have that number right there on the screen and we have people waiting to pray with you. I encourage you to call and receive either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Learn how to grow in your faith when you get Andrew's teaching titled, The Faith of God. Andrew is offering his booklet, The Faith of God, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to get this free little booklet that I wrote. It's just a brief summary of this teaching on the faith of God. And then we also have CDs or DVDs that were taken from my television program on the faith of God. And it'll go into more explanation what this little book booklet is. And then we also have a bonus offer and that's this book on you've already got it or we have this same teaching in CD and DVD form. It's all a package, or you can get any part of it individually. Listen to our announcer, and please call or write today. Andrew's complete series, The Faith of God, is available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. Or you can get these products as part of the Faith of God package, which includes the Faith of God booklet and the book You've Already Got It, plus two albums in your choice of either CD or DVD, The Faith of God and You've Already Got It. The Faith of God package has a catalog value of $70, but you can receive all of these valuable resources today for just $50. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of October, Andrew will be speaking in the UK. Next, Andrew will be in Walsall, England for the Andrew Womack Ministries European Ministers Conference with guest speakers Bob Yandian, Billy Epperhart, and Paul Milligan. And in November, come to the campus in Woodland Park for the annual Women Arise Conference with speakers Terry Savelle Foy, Audrey Mack, and Carrie Pickett. Please note, Andrew will not be speaking at this event. Next, join Andrew and guest speaker Dwayne Sheriff for the Gospel Truth Conference in Addison, Texas. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. 